Multiple moments of precise and calculated movements are what create momentum. It's up to you to act. An object at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon. Those are the words of Sir Isaac Newton, one of the most influential scientists of all time and considered to be a central figure in the scientific revolution, a period of time in the 1600s that literally transformed the way society viewed our relationship with the world around us. Now, when we look at Newton's first law of motion, we need to see beyond an object at rest, meaning an object in motion will stay in motion unless acted upon. An object's mass combined with speed results in momentum. And the only way to change it is through force, action, and sheer will. I love the idea of momentum, so let's keep this moving. I'm Alex Kopach, 2018 gold medalist in bobsleigh from the PyeongChang Winter Olympics. It's an absolute honor to speak to all of you today. For once upon a time, I was sitting right where you are, a student with wild dreams, yet zero aspirations or any idea that I would one day be an Olympic athlete. See, my focus was to get a good education. And believe it or not, I wanted to be an engineer. So in many ways, my education has come in handy for where I ended up and where I am today. Now, how do bobsleigh and education complement one another? Well, when you just look at it from the outside, bobsleigh seems like an intense team of superhuman jocks throwing a fancy sled down a slippery, fast ice canal. But at its core, success and support is a fight to the finish. One wear, top speeds, fast start, and a clean run all make the difference between winning and losing. A difference sometimes no more than a tenth or even hundredth of a second. It means those who can build the most momentum, carry it down the track over the first 50 meters, and give the pilot the most optimal situation for success, have what it takes to win. See, a bobsled does not move unless you put it into motion. And like anything in life, building momentum is what helps propel you towards greater success. I grew up in London, Ontario, firstborn son of a Polish immigrant family. My father came to the country in the late 70s to escape communism. My mother was born here, a product of post-World War II relocation by her parents. And very early in life, parental expectations were laid out clearly. Do your best in school because that way, one day you will have a life of success. As a wee lad, I loved tinkering around with miscellaneous objects and toys like connects. So naturally, my parents suggested that maybe a career in engineering would be my thing. So by grade one, I already had plans for a future in engineering. I worked hard, probably like a lot of you here today. I put the time and effort in to get the best grades I could so that I could get into the university of my choosing. That finally led to enrollment at the University of Western Ontario, where I could finally pursue my life in engineering. I had a clear goal in mind and an answer as to who I was going to be. I certainly seemed to have all the answers, except one. Now that I got into engineering, what type of engineer did I want to be? What was going to be my specialty after graduation? I didn't have that part figured out yet. And that soon led me to a place where I lost my way a bit. Not only were there bumps in my previously smooth, already perfect path, I had lost motivation. And this led to a period of depression, which as you can imagine, was debilitating, frustrating, and draining. It goes without saying, I had lost some momentum in my life. Through all that, however, I managed to find a positive. Growing up, I was very active in sports throughout grade school and high school, so naturally I relied heavily on the gym as a source of relief for my frustration. Through all the turmoil, confusion, and internal pain, the gym remained a good friend and led me to become big and strong, much like the person you see here today. Due to my physical size and attributes, I was getting noticed. And this soon sparked a brand new vision of a new goal of who I could be. Olympic discus thrower Jason Tunks approached me and said, maybe you should be trained as a shot putter. That's how I got involved with the Western track team. I put my mind to it, and as a result, had many successes on the field. Oddly enough, at the same time, I started to enjoy school a whole lot more. I think it was simply because I once again had a clear goal in mind. It was at that time that I started to think beyond school 
and found interest in a wide variety of new things that I wanted to experience, like dancing, the study of physics, and applying to a German exchange program to the university and city of Karlsruhe. And when you build momentum, good things tend to happen. I got accepted to my exchange program and was thriving as I approached the finish line to my engineering degree. As Newton's law says, when an object's in motion, and when combined with speed, momentum continues to build. But remember, an object in motion has to stay in motion. And sometimes that can be quite tricky. Due to my success in athletics, I was presented with two options. Did I want to potentially play football at the professional level? Or did I want to take a chance to make the 24 team Olympic team in the sport of bobsleigh? I was 23 at the time, and my options basically were one, relearn the sport of football in very, very little time, or two, test my current strength and speed against the requirements to participate in bobsleigh. Now, what is bobsleigh? Well, it's a sport made up of a high-tech sled with two or four athletes that act as an engine and a track that's about 1.5 kilometers long of twisting and turning ice canal. Reach speeds of up to 155 kilometers an hour, and up to six plus Gs are felt. That being said, my university spring coach, Marty Robertson, gave me a big dose of encouragement. He said that I would be a freak brakeman. After all, he did bobsleigh himself. He should know. So eagerly, I jumped at the chance. And luckily, at the same time, I was able to split my exchange program into two summer semesters. And the next thing you know, I bought a one-way ticket to Calgary and made a commitment to the world of bobsleigh. I tested well in Calgary, but was rejected by the team. They said I didn't have enough experience, even though I beat up the majority of other athletes. <laughs> Think I was angry? You bet I was angry. <laughs> After all I'd been through, here was yet another obstacle I now had to overcome. Older and wiser, I remained committed to the program. I was determined to follow the training to the letter. At the same time, I began my first physics semester in Germany, and much to my surprise, all the lectures were in German. It's probably a good thing they didn't ask if I knew the language before I applied. I carried on, stayed in motion, and handled the stress of school, as well as the rigorous training that summer. I thought I was ready for a new bobsleigh season. But there's just one problem. I was in the same shape, if not worse, as the previous year. I found it beyond difficult to get the time and answers I needed from the bobsleigh team to get better. I felt powerless to change my scenario. I soon realized that if I wanted to not only catch up, but to surpass everyone else, I was going to need to understand the sport inside and out. I also knew I needed to find a coach that was personally invested in helping me be all I could be. That season, I spoke to fellow athletes, other teams. I emailed coaches and eventually came upon a coach that would change my life forever. Two-time gold medalist, Olaf Hampel. With shared commitment, we worked together towards achieving my goal of becoming the best bobsleigh push athlete in the world. It was very much like an engineering project, which made me even more passionate about the entire process. Together, we pored over theory, read and reviewed papers and procedures, and developed new techniques that I could use to my advantage. And that summer, I built a ton of new momentum towards achieving my future goal of becoming an Olympic champion. Now, as good as all that sounds, there always seemed to be new challenges and obstacles along the way just threatening to slow me down. Sometimes, it was jealousy. Others were simply surprises that I just never saw coming. There was also the setback of injuries. I had suffered from tendinosis for years, had various minor tears. But the worst injury, the one that brought me to my lowest point, was an adductor tear, or simply put, a sport hernia. This injury feels like a spike is being driven into your groin. It's excruciating to cough, to sneeze, let alone getting in and out of bed. It was slow to walk and running. That was out of the question. 
My momentum slowed to a patient grind just two seasons before, two summers before the Olympic season. In many ways, it was a big sigh of relief, for I was no longer exposed to the external roadblocks that kept getting in my way. But on the other hand, being isolated and rejected and angry. It was easy to get inside my own head and let my mind be consumed with negativity. What if this injury doesn't heal? What if all my time and effort these past three years are in vain? Because one thing is certain, the year before the Olympics is the most critical. Teams are formed, and proof of your physical fitness must be demonstrated day in and day out to both the bobsleigh pilots and the coaching staff. If you take anything away from my story of the sport of bobsleigh, Newton's law completely sums it up. Objects in motion stay in motion, and those at rest stay at rest. And when you stay at rest for too long, momentum is stifled and can even start moving backwards. Looking back, when I looked ahead to the future, I saw nothing but the end of the road. Thanks to the support of family, friends, and my coach, Olaf, I was resolved not to give up. I'd come too far, and I'd proven myself to be one to overcome challenges. I wanted nothing more than to prove that I was a critical element to the team's goal of Olympic success. I was going to fight to push towards a solid finish no matter what happened next. But the key was the first to overcome my injury. Because my coach, my mentor, believed in me, we came up with an ultimate solution to get me back to competition. Slowly, momentum began to build over the course of training and rehab over the next four months. I got back to the team and competed in world championships that season, and it didn't stop there. I carried it with me that summer, ready to train through the Olympic year. All that pain, frustration, and determination now helped me build even greater momentum to reach my goal. Despite all the doubts, all the questions of whether or not I could hold up both physically and mentally, I continued to prove everyone wrong time and time again. And finally, I had earned the right to be named to Canada's top four-man team, as well as be named as one of the top two-man bobsleigh athletes. In each race, I was selected to be the two-man brakeman. Our team medaled. We even broke a 14-year-old start record. Like I said, those who can build the most momentum, carry it down the track over the first 50 meters, and give the pilot the most optimal situation for success, have what it takes to win. And through force, action, and sheer will, I finally got there. After facing so many challenges, in many ways, the Olympics almost seemed easy. Well, I mean, not really, but in my heart, I truly believed it. I had built such incredible momentum up to that point, I was not going to be denied my chance to shine on such a grand stage. And in Korea, after four runs, over two days of competition, through five kilometers of ice canal, along with beta breaths of international friends, family, supporters. My pilot, Justin, and I tied with the German team to win gold. A tie, down to the hundredth of a second, considered to be easily one of the most exciting bobsleigh races in the last 20 years. Talk about the feeling of momentum. The power, it's just an amazing feeling. And I'm telling you that when you act on it, there's nothing you can't do. Multiple moments of precise and calculated movements are what create momentum. It's up to you to act. The overall direction and the amount of momentum you have in anything comes down to this. Your own will and the force you exert to propel your dream forward. Use positivity to your advantage. Take inventory of the negativity that surrounds you. That way, the sum of all the energy and influences help push you in the direction of success. I've come a long way since my younger days of dreaming to be an engineer. It became something even larger than I ever thought possible. I'll leave you with this. You have the power to create your own momentum by overcoming obstacles and blazing your own path. When you have a dream, know that your momentum will ebb and flow and change directions. But the one thing you control is the spirit 
and the sheer will of force that you use to push it all forward. Believe that you have the power to change from being at rest to an object in motion. Believe that you are an object in motion, one that has the power to stay in motion. Thank you.